So we wanted to do a video about Indiana Jones, just the whole series. And um, the plan was, <laughs> the plan was that tonight, the night that we're actually recording this right now, we were going to watch Temple of Doom together. Um, so we we started to do that. And then less than 13 minutes later, you said, I'm done. And you said, wait, what? And like, I was all like, like I'd already closed. Like the done, done. Like, so the, so the plan was to watch Temple of Doom. What actually happened was no, we no, no, watched. No, 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 Because I had told you, I had told you ahead of time that I might not, <laughs> that I might not make it through the entire movie. Oh, that's the true. The plan was that I was going to, you know, it's like, I was like, I'm not going to have trouble following this thing. I was like, I didn't have any tea. I was like, eh, you know, once I get bored with it or tired of it, I'll go make my tea. Well, I have tea now. Before we get into the larger subject of the indie franchise in general and, you know, which movies suck and which movies are good and why and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, why we even find this an interesting subject. Try to explain to me what was so bad about that first 12 minutes of Temple of Doom that you just could not bear to watch anymore. It was Willie. I mean, oh, Willie? I mean the, the 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 racist caricatures of the you know the mobsters, I guess. Yeah, yeah. The, the Asian mobsters. That was that was painful, but like I was ready for that. And I was ready for Willie to be um the annoying shrill stereotype of the self-absorbed and helpless woman i just wasn't ready for it to be so for her to be so inept and oblivious and loud about it mm -hmm. and just so much I mean, she's she's not a character. She's a caricature, which I was like kind of ready for, but I wasn't ready for just like just how, like literally turning my stomach like now talking about it. Just oh god, really? I mean, I would never try to argue that Temple of Doom is any sort of a masterpiece. You know, like I don't even think it's the best Indiana Jones movie, but I don't think it's it's bad at all. And that sequence that we watched that you know, we didn't, we barely made it to the end of before you said, nope, I'm out. Can't watch anymore. Like, I don't think that's bad at all. I mean, I, I get some of what you're saying as far as criticism. Like, I do think that, uh, you know, maybe the, you know, they're crawling on the ground and the diamond gets kicked over here and the antidote gets kicked over there. And, you know, that, that, that is maybe a little repetitive, but I don't really mind it so much because I mean, it, they it, it does a decent job of of changing things up and sort of raising the stakes where like you know there's and i can understand i can still understand someone getting annoyed with it if you feel like it's take it's going on too long but you know it's not just five minutes of the exact same thing you know there's the diamond it's goes over the here and it gets thing, but, I mean, the ice gets spilled the, and, you talk about raising the stakes i didn't care about any of it i i mean i know they're not going to kill off indiana jones right so right. i don't care yeah. about the antidote i don't care about it a diamond is boring and it didn't, I mean, I, I you know, I'll, I'll add this in since we're doing a video. Didn't look like a diamond. No, it didn't, but I don't And, the, and I know diamond. I complained about this uh, in, um, especially a diamond of that size. A diamond of that size does not look like that, okay? They're unique. And they're not, it's not just like, you know, uh, traditional, um, you know, round cut solid hair. Just bigger. <laughs> like, it, it, like, it looked so chintzy, bless their hearts. You know, the, I'm sure the front <laughs> masters tried really, and they wanted it to sparkle because it's a diamond, therefore it sparkles. Not necessarily at that size. Uh -uh, uh -uh. And then when they, I, I know I complained when they spilled the ice, I'm like, the ice does not look like the diamond. Like literally, the ice spilled. Willie goes ah or something like that. She makes this annoying sound because she's blonde and therefore annoying. And I was just like, it's right there, <laughs> like. The ice is all around it. I'm like, it's right there. I can, I can see, see it. it. I can yeah. see which one the diamond is. Because it doesn't look like the ice. Like, even though it doesn't look like a diamond, if they'd actually had a diamond, maybe that would have worked. But, like, the ice is not, like, oh. The ice is, is opaque. The ice is, like, solid white. And the diamond yeah, is yeah. translucent. Like, the ice yeah. isn't clear at all. And even, like, an actual diamond would have some clarity, even though it wouldn't be as clear as the fake one. And then, I mean, and of course, also what we, we said, and I was willing to forgive the stuff about the show because it's not, 
it's not about the show, but it is about, you know, the, the sequence that it goes into is, you know, adventure and stuff. And yeah. it is about that. And I was just like, I'm so, can we just, I'm just so not just bored, but I was just irritated by it. I'm like, this isn't enjoyable at all. I just, you know, I'm not having fun. This is annoying. And I don't want to sit through, you know, not quite two hours, but yeah, you know, another hour and 42 minutes of annoying. We were talking uh, yesterday about this. You 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 were talking about how um, one of the major points where you sort of relate to the indie uh, the Indiana Jones movies, and and one of the things that really sort of influences your opinion of them is the female characters. So obviously, not a whole lot of love for Willie in Temple mm-hmm. of Doom. Uh, but what about, uh, like to go back to Raiders, what about, uh, Marion in Raiders? And I guess you would also say Marion in Crystal Skull because she comes back for that, but. Uh, yeah, that's really, that, that, that's, that's a lot of why I rank them the way I do. First of all, let's, let's, uh, we'll come back to this. Okay. Okay. What's your, what's your, what's your order of, you know, best to worst Indiana Jones movies so far? I would go probably Raiders, uh, Last Crusade, Temple of Doom and, um, uh, crystal skull but i but temple but 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 temple of doom and 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 last crusade could switch places i'm not sure uh because i i i hold i like them both very much i really really like last crusade um and i and i like temple of doom a lot and it's been a while since i've seen them so i'm not positive if that would still be my opinion if i watch them again but i think i would go raiders crusade temple and uh and crystal skull yeah how about you uh, Crusade, Raiders, Temple of Doom, Crystal Skull. Okay. So we would just switch. We, we would flip-flop Crusade and uh, Raiders. Yeah, but I'm very obviously not uh, uh, waffling at all on Temple of Doom maybe being better than Crusader. Right, right. How, how close are Crusade and Raiders for you? Is that like a tough choice or do you, are you positive no, that not Crusade is Absolutely better? Absolutely positive. Yeah. I'm... I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident e- about all four of them, their, their placement. I don't think any of them would switch. The only, the, the last two, but no, I'm pretty confident about all of them. And it, it really, the, the big thing, the, the one that sets uh, Crusade apart is the dialogue. I love well-written dialogue. And the dialogue in, in Last Crusade is just miles better than any, the, the dialogue in the other ones. Yeah. Well, that, I think... has decent dialogue. Last Crusade has excellent dialogue. It's just so much more quotable. It's so much more interesting. It's sharp. It's well paced as far as the dialogue. It's you know the the characterization is better. Um, I like that it, it's not like it is independent, but I like that it builds on Raiders. It does. I mean, you, you get you get some characters that that come back yeah. and they're consistent and they're better written than they are in Raiders. And it it has. Um... It has a similar structure to Raiders. Uh, Crusade, I, f- I think, is much closer to Raiders in terms of just the way it feels and the way the story plays out than, uh, than Temple of Doom is. And I feel like maybe, I mean, I think that might be part of the reason why Temple of Doom um, has had such a poor reputation for so many years because in a lot of ways, Temple of Doom is very different from Raiders. Um, it's set in, uh, you know, it, it, it's largely in the same location, you know, and um, a lot of the, just a lot of the, it, it deals with different sort of tropes and, and it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's an Indiana Jones movie, but it's a lot different than Raiders. Whereas Last Crusade uh, you know, you have the scene at the beginning with Indy at school, and then mm-hmm. there's the explanation of what the MacGuffin is and yeah, but you know, also what the you quest the is. At, you have the scene before the beginning with young Indiana Jones. That's right. Yeah. And, and you know, and I, I really like yeah. I really, River Phoenix in that is great. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's one of, one of my one of my favorite lines. Everyone's lost but me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's so. It's so definitive, and um, yeah. the way it pan- the way it pans past the dog, 
Like the yeah. dog picks up. And says, I'm just like, oh look! And it's, it's, it's so it's rewatchable because that yeah. moment is not in there for you to watch it the first time. Right. You know, and uh, the, the relationship established between um, Indiana's dad, Count of Ten Indiana. But dad, this is important in Greek, uh, or is it because he starts t- counting one, two in Greek. Yeah. Ada. Theo and he's like making faces as he's doing this and it's just it's so good oh my god it's so good and it's so well acted and um yeah and of course some of it is a little heavy-handed like I mean the snakes and the hat and the like, oh yeah well, it's oh like my. it's the origin of Indiana Jones's hat yeah, exactly. <laughs> how he becomes so it's a little heavy in it but at the same time <laughs> he acquired like all done, of his defining characteristics in this yeah, one it's adventure done in a loving way you know it's just really well done and uh i mean just so many things you know henry jones jr i like indiana we named the dog <laughs> we named the You're dog named indiana. The dog <laughs> and then he's like oh the dog from the beginning it just yeah. fits together so well and, and I mean, it sean connery's performance is great he's terrific the, the guys that they bring back and they give more to do and develop their characters more like they're more developed than they were in raiders and you know in, in raiders it's like the guy who you know talks to indy at the beginning and the guy who has the big family that's it right. that's all we know right and but we get to see I, they're they're more I will give Last Crusade this over Raiders, even though I do think Raiders overall is a better movie. I'll give Last Crusade this much over it is that it it its ending is also very similar to Raiders, but I think it finds there there they there I I like when there's a there's a, a clear and understandable reason that is also meaningful like to who the characters are as to why they win in the end or why they survive or why they make it out. You know what I mean? And um, cause like at the end of Raiders, like India is smart enough to say, don't look at it. You know, like when they open the Ark of the Covenant and the spirits come out, he's like, shut your eyes, Mary, and don't look no matter what. Right. So, and everybody else is like, look at all the crazy stuff and they all get killed. And India is the smart one. He's like, you can't look at it. No, like man is not meant to see this. Right. Um, there's something similar that happens at the end of Last Crusade when they're sort of dangling in the precipice and, you know, like Ilsa is reaching for the for the cup and she can't get it and she slips, you know, Indy can't hold her and she falls. And then the same thing happens to Indy a second later and he's in the same position where he's like, he can almost grab the cup. He can he just, touch it. Like she can was touch reaching it, yeah. for it and she's like, I can get it. I can and, get it. And that's, she does, she does so well. Like that, and the angle is great. That oh, mad it's great. gleam in her eyes. Beautiful. It's great. And the reason that Indy survives is that he is willing to let it go. And not he needs just that. he needs not his dad. That. He need go ahead. Go ahead. His dad tells his dad, who has been absent for his life, who who, who keeps calling him Henry. Yeah. And he, you know, has been gone his whole life because he's been so focused on the quest for the grail. Right. He's the one who says, and he says, Indiana. Yeah. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. And 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 that, I mean, it's so, you know, it shows the change in their relationship. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And it's because he's because he's saying he's saying, I would rather have my son than have the Holy Grail. Yeah. Like, I've got I've got you. Let me pull you up. Let it go. Yeah. I um, know who you are. Yeah. 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 So it's, 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 so it's yeah. And, and so, yeah, it's, it, there's, there's, it's not just, oh, the good guys were better or, you know, they were smarter or the, the bad guys made a mistake. It was, no, there's a meaningful reason why, you know, they don't suffer the same fate as the villains. It's because they're willing, they have a strength of character. They, they're, they're, they're able to make a difficult choice that the bad guys aren't. The bad guys aren't able to let go of their selfishness and their ambition and the good guys are and the uh and and the ending of crusade i think well not only that you know, the, the 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 good guys choose each other yes yes yeah. yes absolutely it's, it's, it's so yeah, it's it's a terrific ending and then and then they literally ride off into the sunset together yeah i know 
cool. Which and, is and, nice. that, and that's where the credits roll. They're just riding and it's pretty and yeah. you know, the, the music, that iconic theme. Yeah, it's, just uh, it's so great. Nice. And that's why, even though, even though I I do not dislike Crystal Skull nearly as much as a lot of people do. Like, I did not think it was a bad movie by any stretch. I, I rank it last. You didn't think it was a bad movie? No, not at all. Really? I, I you rank actually it, thought it was a good movie. I think it's a fine movie. I don't think it's great. I think it, I yeah, I, I think it's a perfectly fine movie. I, I, I think, guess, okay, okay. I guess it depends, you know, like I'm, I'm just thinking good movie, bad movie, like pretty simple. There are parts of it that I think are ridiculous. Um, not the parts that most people reference. Like I had, I was shot when, when people like would not shut up about the fridge. I thought that was the dumbest thing on the internet that year. And everybody was like, oh, it's so ridiculous. He survives a nuclear blast by hiding in a fridge. Who fucking cares? Do we come to Indiana Jones for realism? Oh, he, you would never survive a nuclear blast in a fridge. Shut up, you fucking nerd. Who cares? What I thought was, was ridiculous was the bit where Mac was swinging in the jungle with the monkeys because it's like a preposterously fake looking effect shot. And it's like, it just, it's, it's something that you could tell they, they thought that it was going to be really cool. You know, it was like, oh, he's swinging through the vines of the jungle with the monkeys. It's going to be great. And it's like, oh, you're, you're dealing with artifacts that are in, in one and three well known to be culturally relevant. In two yeah. and four, you're dealing with shit that's made like completely made up. The crystal skulls thing is not. Yeah, I mean, you can't, it's hard I to mean, go from the holy grail to, and there's these really weird crystal skulls. Well, I mean, um, same thing with Temple of Doom. What were they going after? Uh, the what the uh, the Shankara stones. Yeah, not a, not exactly a, a household word. I was for I was I was Western so audience. I, like, like, I told you this. I mean, I was ready. I mean, it's obviously Excalibur needed to be the next one. I'm like that's it just seems so obvious like what else do you have that is you know an ob i mean yes you can get into um oh gosh i've forgotten its name the other one the sword of roland um what was that one's name flambert no that's the type of sword i can't remember it's been a while since i've read that anyway um the the sword of uh, roland sword also had a, a, a very you know, he had he had a whole set of mail that was supposed to. I think he 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 had the arms of Achilles, but his sword was separate. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, but it's not as well known as right. you know you know freaking Excalibur. Excalibur, yeah. And so you know, Indiana Jones and the Sword of Arthur. There you go, Indiana Jones and the Sword of Arthur. Yeah, makes her it makes her a well sounding title. It's and everybody's like, you know, it's the Sword and the Stone Sword. It's that one. Everybody knows it, you know. Yeah. And, and you you lose that in um, Temple of Doom and Crystal Skull. It's just like it's you know this stuff. It's really important because we say so, and like you don't have it's not it's not already something like. And also, I don't remember there being. I mean, I guess it's it, it important because it's aliens, but like, I I didn't feel feel that they did a good job of establishing why it was so important like they, they don't do that with um at the beginning there so um yeah i think the difference in what they're chasing after matters that that's that's why i like one and three better than two and four that's a big part of it and then the female characters elsa is my favorite by far like she's so interesting and like it, it apparently like he does indiana doesn't know her real well because his dad's the one who's been corresponding with her right and so he just sort of knows about her through trying to find his dad. And he knows about, you know, I'm looking for Dr. Schneider. And uh, she's like, well, you've met her. And he's like, whoa, because he wasn't expecting it right. to be a woman. It's like the doctor joke. Pretty much, yeah. Except, you know. She's a Nazi. Now that joke was funny. <laughs> That was like I did not see that second coming. She's a Nazi. What? What do you mean? What are you talking about? And Indiana, please. <laughs> and uh, you know, he's like, wait, wait, wait. And she's one of them. And he trusts the girl over his dad. And he's he's like, I should have seen. It. She ransacked her own room, and I fell for it. I'm like, she did a pretty darn good job of ransacking her own room. You know, that was good. I mean, she that given the the 
idiocy with which now again he was significantly younger with which with which he, he drank the poison from a guy i mean he's <laughs> surrounded by this guy's looks he's and, like you know, give me that give me that glass of whatever that might be <laughs> that, that your guys pour, oh my god when yeah. you know that they've been trying to like come after you and they've tried to kill you multiple times yeah sure whatever yeah thanks for um, the drink trustworthy friend dumb ass <laughs> oh and yeah but so apparently he's just dumb and well, uh, yeah, but then, then, yeah. then yeah his dad is saying, how did you know she was a nazi i didn't see it and she talks in her sleep he's like i didn't trust her why did you <laughs> i'm like oh oh uh, dad still got it yeah i mean sean connery he's sean, he's, he's sean connery so yeah that was that was i found that hilarious i mean ilsa is definitely uh the more interesting character i mean because like uh because because she tur she turns out to be a villain you know which i think is an interest again to sort of differentiate it from raiders where you know marion is there's there's you know there's tension between her and indy for a lot of the movie but she's always on his side and yeah. with she's not a bad guy no and she's not a bad guy is with, an interesting villain um because you know she's after the grail and i mean that that's that's part of that that storyline is the difference between her and between indiana and between indiana's dad is that you know the the the, the differences in in what they're willing to do to get this object and and you know um you know she says to him i would have done anything to get the grail you would have done the same he says i'm sorry you feel that way and you know and it's, again, it's, it comes down to what you value. And I think that's mm -hmm. a very, you know, talking about timeless themes. Yeah. That's, you know, looking at what you value and, and what we, what we're willing to sacrifice to get what we want. Those, I mean, that's, that's great. And, um, You know, she she shows um, th there is there is you know there's there's a scene that's very reminiscent of the the face melty scene, except we get the back of his head. With right, the, and he know. when he rapidly ages, yeah, yeah. Um, really, and, really uh, cool effect, by the way. Like I know everybody everybody talks about the face melting in Raiders, which is I mean you should because it's a fantastic shot. But yeah, the, really, the I didn't I didn't uh, when I saw it again I was like uh, whatever. Oh, I love it. I think it's great. But the but the, the the super fast aging when the guy drinks from the wrong grill like that is a really underrated shot. Yeah, like that's a really really cool effect. It's super scary and freaky I think the, and. But the other thing is because remember you we talked about or you mentioned about you know how Indy being smart enough is what saved him. And that's what saves them there at that point, you know, because he says the grail wouldn't have been, you know, and, and Elsa is the one who who brings it and says, you know, he says, truly, this is the cup of the King of Kings. Right. He's and looking she, for something grand. Yeah. Yeah. But she does that to him. And he's like, I don't know, Dr. Schneider, you're the expert. And yeah, she, she gets rid it. of him. She, yeah. she picks it and she picks it, deliberately picks the wrong one. And I mean, at that point, they don't know what's going to happen, you know, but although the, the, the guide essentially has told them, you know, while true grill will bring you life, false grill will take it from you. So she's like, Arr. and uh, so, so they <laughs> have an idea up. that something's going to happen, you know, that it's not, and it's not going to be good for him. And, uh, and then, you know, Indiana, I think is the one who says, you know, it wouldn't be gold and studded with gems, you know, and, or, or. Maybe she says that, and then he's like, it would be a simple cup, the cup of a carpenter. And they get right. the one that looks they, And they find like. the Drabus looking one, yeah. And it's it's interesting, though, because, you know, of course, the inside appears to be, like, gilded. So it does have a glow to it, which I thought was very nice. Mm -hmm. Like, it's got kind of an inner glow. But then that's, of course, that's not the end. You know, so they have that scene that mimics Raiders, and then they go beyond it. Um, right, because they try to take the cup they try yeah. to take the grail away it's from like the sanctuary. Yours and, yours and mine, we've got it. Let's go. And she wants she wants to take it. And uh, then we get to the scene that we talked about earlier, where she's not willing to to choose. Yeah, you know, she wants the object. She wants the yeah. object. It's a thing to her. And you know, also in fairness, you know, that's never been Indy's thing. You know, he he hasn't been fixated on the grail. 
but it's really about his dad. His dad is the one who has him yeah. over this object that he's chased his entire life. He chooses his son instead of this this object that has kept him away from his son for so long. The bit where um, Indiana says, "You know, we, we we never we never talked," and and his dad says, "Well, we have time. What do you want to talk about?" It's like. I can't think of anything. He's like, then what are you complaining about? Let's go. <laughs> and then, and then when Indy, you know, ha- apparently has gone over the cliff and uh, the dad says, he's gone. And I never told him anything. You know, he, he knows then when he thinks it's too late, he understands what he means. That it's not yeah. just, we want to talk about this thing, that it's, you know, this connection. We haven't yeah. talked. Yeah. Like yeah. Just... He, he gets what Indy's, Indy's saying there. And of course it's not too late, yeah. Um, but you know, it, it builds piece by piece throughout. It's, yeah. it, I mean, and, and for me, again, I, I value characterization much more than plot. And I think the oh, characterization yeah. of Last Crusade is just miles better than any of them. It's terrific. Um, it's terrific. And I know um, you, you and I have talked, in the past about uh like I, I i appreciate the way it uses uh humor and especially like in in the scene where they're breaking through the floor of the library how they they use the joke of the library and like you know hitting the stamp at the same time as indy smashes into the floor so it sounds like the guy is like hitting the stamp and it's making this tremendous sound and they use that to sort of finesse their way past how can they break through the floor of this library without anybody noticing they distract you from that with this great joke and then the next scene is oh they're already under the floor you know what i mean like it just moves you right by it and it's so slick the way they do that it's very Um, well done but also they set that up of course in in in, in a similar way when he's looking around he's like three three seven seven ten he's like and one of the 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 area there's no number there and then he goes up to the second floor and he sees he goes up the stairs, the, the spiral staircase, looks down, he's like 10. And then he goes, because it, it's in a Roman numeral. Yeah, he says, X, X marks the spot. X. But I love the delivery of that. He's he's reluctant. <laughs> right. Because, of course, at the beginning in the scene with the, the class. Yeah. Oh, says, yeah. You know, he says X never marks the spot. How, yeah. Yeah. He's talking about how, you know, most archaeology is done at the library. And, of course, you know, by this point, you know fans of the series have seen the adventures that he's been on and, and there's references to other ones and things like that he's like most archaeology is down the library you know whatever indiana jones and uh you know it's, it's something 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 and x never ever marks the spot and then an he's at the library movie, yeah he's x at the library and x marks, marks the spot the spot you know he, he just it, it's not quite that but he's like okay so this so this time it does okay um, so there's, it, it's just this great setup that you didn't realize was set yeah. up. It's not foreshadowing. It's and, set up. And so that, that payoff is so good because it's not like, it's just like, oh yeah, there you go. And I, to me, it's the lack or the relative lack. Cause I don't, I mean, it's been a while since I've seen it. I don't want to say that it doesn't have anything like that, but it feels like there's a relative lack of that sort of thing in Crystal Skull. Um, which is, which to me is a much bigger problem with it than, you know, like, oh, there's aliens or, oh, the fridge. Like I, you know what I mean? Like I, the, like there's, it, it feels like when they get, when they get to the end of Crystal Skull, there's like a desire to speak to something greater, to speak to a more universal theme. Like when Indy says, you know, that was their greatest treasure knowledge. Right. And it's like, but was the movie wasn't really about that. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, it's a nice idea. It's a, it's a nice, it's a nice, it's nice that they thought like we should stick something in here to make it seem a little bit more meaningful. It's like, but I mean, it's, but they just stuck it on there. Yeah. It doesn't, the way that works. It's, it's not, that's not what the movie's about. Um, so, you know, and that's, that's, those are the reasons why those are some of the reasons why I would rank that one last, even though I like, I, again, like, you know, I, I saw it in the theater. I have it on DVD. I've watched it. Not, I've probably watched it the least of all of the movies, you know, but um, I don't like have any hatred for it. I don't think it's like a terrible, it's not, I wouldn't have been embarrassed to be involved in it or anything like that. I mean, um, and I, I think a lot of the negative fan reaction was really, really over the top. 
I mean, like, even if you just didn't think it was a very good movie, like, I don't, I mean, there were people, it, there were pra people practically, like, tearing their clothes off with how fucking terrible they thought the movie was. I can't believe they did that to Indiana Jones. It's like, just, God, calm down. It's not that I bad. I can't believe they did that to Marion. Okay, I so mean, what Marian about, what about... better writing from, like, the first movie. Now, she's not... Tell That's me. one thing I'll say about Temple of Doom, is it made me realize that it could have been worse. Because it was. Willie is written worse <laughs> than Marion was. And I mean, Marion is very much like, and, and inconsistently written, inconsistently written. She is apparently able to run her, run the, the, the bar right. on her yeah. own, yeah. you know, with no problems. Yet, like when they, they have the marketplace scene and, you know, she, she can't take care of herself then. Okay, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. Because because that point we need Indy has. To, oh gosh, and I realize, and you know, I'm. That's even with cutting it some slack, just for when it's written. It's just like oh, okay, whatever, fine, whatever. And then we come back in the Crystal Skull, and she's like, pined for Indy, her entire life. Never made any attempt to get into contact with them because I mean. He's like a freaking professor. Right. He's not that hard to not find. Not hard to find. He has, he, he's a, like a tenured professor at a university. Yeah. <laughs> like... Not hard to find. She's made no attempt to get in contact with him. And yet she's been pining for him this whole time. And at the same time, like within the space of however long the movie takes, you know, she's willing to look past their terrible relationship, <laughs> terrible relationship. And yeah. get back. No, no, girl, go the other way. Right. Please, like get away from him he's an awful human being like and he's also in because i liked him i liked him in uh because of his relationship with his father i liked yeah. him in uh, uh crusade crusade yeah but like I, and, and yeah the, the the whole she's like she was a kid he was her dad's grad assistant and like they were in oh yeah like as a teacher oh gosh it's just so it's gross. not okay yeah it's not okay no it's not okay and he's still like significantly older than her in raiders and it's just oops. Yeah. it's so creepy and then she has his kid because the raiders and oh god like if that could have been written if, if they could have written that better Oh, no, let me put it, let me rephrase that. They could have written that better. And I might have, if, if they'd done a good job with Marion, I think I would have liked the movie, even given the, the alien wacky nonsense. Right. If they'd done a good job with Marion and with the kid. Mutt. What the? What? I know. I don't know what they were thinking with that. I mean, I, well, I will say I liked the bit with him and his comb. I thought that was cute. <laughs> it's of course it's of course to call out to Indiana's hat. Yeah. And I mean, but it's it's like more pretentious because he's got a, he's got to comb his hair. Oh yeah. He's got his, his 50s ducktail going there. I mean Yeah, on. I know. I like yeah. the ducktail, but like the, the the you know, if he just always had the comb, and especially it, if if it could have been useful in some way, but it's just it's just an affectation and it's just like it's there, it's it's there to mock the hat. You know, we all like the hat. It's cute. Cool. Right. <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, it just doesn't work. Like it's an interesting idea done poorly. And that that that's it. That that that's the movie. It sums that's up the, the movie. movie. That's Crystal Skull. It's an interesting idea. A series of interesting ideas. All of them done poorly. All of them done really poorly. Let me ask you this. What is it about Indiana Jones, either as a character or just as a as a, a franchise, as a series of movies in general? Like, what is it that you find appealing? Like, what is it about Indiana Jones that that you at least enjoy enough that you thought, hey, let's make a video about that? The fact that you would dare put Raiders ahead of Last Crusade. <laughs> um, I do think I do think um, Raiders was somewhat definitive. Mm -hmm. um you know it, it it did some things story-wise that at least hadn't been done in a while um and, and did in new ways and, and did good job with um i think last crusade absolutely blows raiders out of the water um 
Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. And, uh, you know, as I, as I matured as a feminist, I liked Raiders less and less and less. Yeah. Um, like we right. can tell stories that don't marginalize people. Like we can do that. And so I started liking stories that do, you know, sideline people and like specifically sideline groups of people or types of people in specific ways. It says people who are like this. Yeah. I was like, yeah, um, I, I not, I no, mm -mm, not cool with that. And uh, the, you know, and also the, the racism in it, the less patience with that um the um obvious uh nazis and then you know we changed it up a little bit with you know communists as the bad guys yeah um it's just lazy storytelling i do think um the uh the the sort of quasi twist on it in last crusade you know they were trying to they were trying to do something different with it but it wasn't just the nazis um and i appreciated that to some degree but you know even now i think they could have done a better job with that in really looking at the difference between you know like like you know how far a rich person should be, you know, you know, obviously he's a, a bad guy, but it's not because he's wealthy. Um, you know, th there are some missed opportunities there. But I mean, again, that's still like early 90s. That's a long time ago. Doesn't feel like it, but it is. Yeah, I know. Um, and I mean, even even I, I mean, that's part of the reason that I don't like it as much as I did is because I'm, you know, I've seen new things and learned new things since then so you know I, I question it more but i do think uh last crusade stands up to that questioning better than any of the others do indiana jones is it's not one of those things that i would ever say is one of my very very favorite things like it's not up there with like star trek or you know superman or batman or something like that uh but i've always enjoyed it like throughout my life. Like I, I can't remember how old I was when I first saw Raiders, but I mean, I was, I, I was, I was too young to have seen it when it first came out. Cause I think it came out in like 81 and I was born in 80. So I, you know, it was, I was a, we're just a, a teeny Steve. I was just a little baby. Um, so I'll be, mean, I, but I saw it on VHS or on TV or something at some point when I was like, you know, five or six or seven or something like that. Um, and I always liked it. It always just innately kind of appealed to me. And I think, I mean, part of it is that it's just, it's an adventure story and it's, it's something that, you know, I mean, the part of the point of it originally, part of the attraction to it for Spielberg and, and for George Lucas initially was the idea of taking something that was in its original era when they were, when they were making like the movie serials that Raiders was a riff on. Um, it was like, it was less than B movie stuff. You know what I mean? It was like, it was Saturday morning serial stuff. It was like, they were not very expensive. They were not intended to be all that, you know, the studio didn't care if they were good or impressive or had any particular artistic merit. It was just, you know, let's just do something to, you know, to give people something to watch after the newsreel, but before the, the you know, the, the feature presentation and it will do it and, you know, to be continued so that people will maybe if they're interested, they'll come back next week to see the next one and it'll be like a draw to the theater. And, um, and they said, let's take this, this sort of lowly, neglected, forgotten, abandoned form of cinema and let's try to do it really well. Like let's let's use all of our skills as writers and artists and you know and directors and etc. And let's try to do this same basic thing, but on an A level instead of like a C or a D level. That theme of exploration and the unknown, I think, is is part of the draw for me. You know, the, the idea that, you know, there is something to, you know, this, this, this artifact, that it's not just historically or culturally significant, that it is a touchstone, touchstone to something more in some way 
whether it's the crystal skulls or you know the you know the the, the trappings in the temple um or you know the 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 holy grail that that very it like saves his father from freaking death yeah or yeah. the the ark of the covenant that like melts people's faces if you look into it <laughs> and and, and the, the, I, I will say that that was, that was something else they were like oh yeah you know hitler are scholars who have studied this and you know and, and anybody who carries the ark of the covenant before them into battle would be unstoppable and like that's not the way it works like <laughs> i'm totally not a scholar and like i know that you know the israelites were unstoppable obviously not were they though i mean like, <laughs> i i think they were definitely stopped at some point well I, I, you know the movie could have made the case that it was because they'd lost but no it was because like if you're not right with god carrying the ark doesn't mean crap in fact it's gonna tick god off that you're carrying there and be like oh we have god's favor like if you said oh we have god's favor and you didn't and like right. you weren't living right and you were unkind and you were like a crappy person the devil's yeah. like shut up and we'll like you won't even have to worry about the enemy because god's gonna strike you down first <laughs> as though like god could have they're, they're... exactly what happened let's be honest <laughs> as though like god would be powerless to stop them if he as god would be like up in heaven looking down in horror going man these nazis right wish i could oh. do something but they've got the ark i don't know like there's nothing yeah. i can do those are the like, rules even as, a, even as a kid like even as a kid <laughs> yeah. i remember thinking like why is this like white French guy playing dress up with something that he actually believes has power? Like, why would you do that? Like, what is wrong? How? I mean, it's the Lois Lane question. How dumb was he? <laughs> right. Dumb enough to get his face melted off, obviously. <laughs> yes. Jeez. Very much so. It has all of those elements and it deals with all of those ideas, but it does do it in a way that is pulpy you know that is reminiscent of like 19th century adventure fiction and then also those those 1930s and 40s movie serials that were also inspired by 19th century adventure no, fiction no it's, it's 20th um, century or 20, at least no, what i was talking about was 20th well century. Not, yeah yeah i think yeah but um yeah you know like but like jules verne and uh you know the alan quartermain stories and stuff like that and like some of the 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 non-sherlock holmes uh conan doyle stuff and i mean sure, holmes as well because holmes was was it was mystery but it was also adventure stories too Poppy, yeah yeah very poppy. Uh, tarzan um, of the tarzan age. yeah yeah All yeah those. edgar rice burroughs big time i mean yeah. um and so it's it's that kind of thing where it's it does if you if you catch it in a more sort of thoughtful mode right it does deal with deeper themes and 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 deeper issues and and sort of universal questions and things like that but it does it in a way that isn't heavy and isn't dense you know and yeah it uses it uses the fun of an engaging story to sort of explore those deeper threads yeah um, exactly and like bell says Far off places, daring sword fights, magic spells, a prince in disguise. Hey, producers, that's what you're missing. Far <laughs> off places, daring sword fights, magic spells. You need that prince in disguise, folks. Very, it's a crucial that's element. Find, that's what we find out in movie five. That you know, the, the, you know, Indiana Jones is is connected somehow to a royal family in this far uh. off place. Indiana Jones been a prince all along. Indiana Jones and the Frog Prince. <laughs> that's what we need. But yeah, so I that I think that's that's what I like about it is that it does it's not completely frivolous. It's not just like popcorn fare, but it's not super heavy and super serious. It's fun. It's you know, especially with the original trilogy to a lesser extent crystal skull uh but especially with the original trilogy it's really really well made great action scenes really it's like a chance for spielberg as a director to just kind of show off and say look what i can do um and and because of the nature of the material it it, it sort of tamps down spielberg's more sentimental tendencies you know it's it's nice to remember that the same guy who made like et which is just like a toothache in the form of a movie also made Raiders of the Lost Ark where a Nazi's face melts off at the end, <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah, same guy, it. different skills in the form of a movie. It's, wow. He's just, he's a fantastic director. 
It's just that he's not always a fantastic director, but when he's on, he is absolutely brilliant. And and I think the Indiana Jones movies are his ideal sort of showcase because the material is light enough that he can have fun with it and it doesn't have to be really serious and and you know uh dramatic and depressing um but at the same time it's it's serious enough that he can't really indulge his more sentimental instincts you know it kind of keeps him right where he needs to be to do his best it's not like it's not dramatic enough that he gets overly maudlin yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like, um, but I'm saying, you know, if 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 you're if he's dealing with a serious topic, there's also, you know, even from a dramatic, like the 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 pulpy nature of it keeps it from being too sentimental. Yeah, and even the potentially like that that the scene at the end of of Crusade where he says Indiana, let it go, like he could have Spielberg that up. You know, that could have been like that could have been one of those maudlin moments you just alluded to, where it's like because it is it's a really big emotional moment. You know, mm-hmm. and you could have easily overplayed that, you know, either but through he didn't. the he didn't. It was perfect. The way he did it was perfect. I would say uh, also Sean Connery there. Oh, I mean, for, for he, Crusade. He was, yeah, absolutely. He was Well, yeah. no, no, no. Like in specifically in that moment. I mean, oh yeah. James, oh yeah. James Bond. But in that moment, yeah. he's he's quiet and he's gentle. That's and true. It's it's you know, that's it's it's a really good perf- I mean the, the the whole the whole way through it's a great performance from him. But, you know, that's he's doing something different and he's doing it well. That's you know? true. That's that, that's a good point, because, I mean, that was Sean Connery. He had had his he had already had his sort of late period career resurgence because he had done the Untouchables two mm-hmm. years before that. And mm-hmm. I think and won the Oscar for that for best supporting actor. And that and again, like not not a James Bond type of part, but a very big, showy, bombastic kind of macho character, mm-hmm. you know, like. You yeah. Know, the, and, and, and so Dr. Jones in Crusade is completely the opposite of that. Yes. And it's a great opportunity. Again, a, a reminder of, oh, shit, he can act <laughs> like yeah. he's not he's just got range. Yeah. He's got depth. He's, yeah. you know, yeah. A yeah. great, you know, I mean, a great role, like a lot. I mean fun i mean that and that that's that's the movie that's that's the movie fun yeah. but deep yeah very yeah. much like henry jones there you go wow let's end it there okay <laughs> that's a great point yeah i mean i don't and i look i i, I do not for a second mean to disparage Last Crusade, even though I would say, I, I i would still say i think raiders is a better movie i mean the last i could sing the and steve. hopefully yeah. yes dana steve yes dana you're wrong. Oh boy, that just doesn't feel as good. <laughs> well, it shouldn't, because you're wrong. Last Crusade I is so much better than Raiders. I won't lie; that doesn't no, feel as good. Not just better, but so much better. Okay. Well, we we will agree to disagree. I mean, I and I don't. Oh, I, I I don't. We huh. will. Steve. And I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't object to any of your reasons for 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 having less esteem for Raiders and having more esteem for Crusade. Like, I think uh, your critiques, I think, are things that I, I completely agree with. It's just, you know, when it, in the final analysis, I would still have to go with Raiders. But I mean, but Last Crusade is, is wonderful. And it's so good and has such a good ending that even though I do not despise Crystal Skull anywhere near as much as a lot of people do, like, it, it still makes me wish that they had just stopped at three. Because... Last Crusade is the perfect ending yeah. for that series. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's it's so good that it's kind of like, um, you know, if you if you're gonna do another one after this, you better it had better be good. Knock it out of the park. Yeah, yeah they didn't, and they didn't. That may have contributed to to some of the the uh, negativity sent toward Crystal Skull. It's not that it's a bad movie, but it's not as good of a movie as uh last crusade and it kind and it spoils that perfect ending you yeah. know where it's like uh, it's the, they came back they did another one like 20 years later nobody was really like begging for it they just came back and did another one and it just it's just not it's mm-hmm. that we we had the perfect ending we don't need more <laughs> you they, know? Wrote, they literally wrote off into the sunset yeah exactly that's they literally tough. wrote in that's the end when they ride off into the sunset that's the end don't do any more. <laughs> like, There's a part of me that wonders 
if they weren't gunning for a fifth one when they did the fourth one. That's one way to extend a franchise. Just like do do the perfect ending and then do one too many, and then people keep letting giving you more chances to fix it. <laughs> That's it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for listening to us ramble on about Indiana Jones and a bunch of other stuff that had nothing to do with Indiana Jones. Well, it might and get cut, but you'll see some of it. I'm you'll sure. see a lot of it. Sure, you'll see some of it. And we'll, we'll, we'll see you next time. So thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye, Dana. Bye, Steve.